The intuition is very interested in unfinished business. Oh, yes. I agree. Very I agree. interested. It needs something to do. Hello, my name is Alex Jovanovich, and I am a senior editor at Art Forum. I am absolutely delighted to have the artist and critic Marjorie Wellish here with me today for a new episode of Under the Cover. A selection of Marjorie's paintings from her Indecidability of the Sign Yellow Black series are featured as a portfolio in the February 2024 issue. Would you mind telling the Art Forum audience what the impetus was for starting this series? In 2007, if not earlier, I introduced a swatch or a sample of barrier tape imitating it in works already configured with given palettes. Fast forward to a Fulbright I had in 2010, taking me to what was then the Edinburgh College of Art and on tour at the Inverleith House, the then director told me about the conversion of this 18th century residence to a 20th century project space for art. And at one point I said, I could diagram this. What I meant was I could treat the conversion of a private residence to a public art space as a site of installation wherein those functions that were suitable for private residents were no longer suitable for a public space and vice versa. And that's how barrier tape had a starring role hmm. because there it was in this former residence covering thresholds or low ceilings. And so the barrier tape, what's interesting to me about it is that when you first utilized it in your work, it was a collage element. Or a montage element. Got it. If okay. you know what I mean. Uh, in other words, I brought it in, actually, in one key work on paper, it crosses another specific swatch or given palette. But let me be clear about this. In perception theory, barrier tape is called grating, the alternation of yellow-black. Mm. In perception theory, incremental change is called a gradient. And so in a work that is key to my thinking, disjunction is at least as important as conjunction. There also seems to be an element of you have in introducing uh, restrict controls, uh, giving yourself certain prompts or something within these very tight parameters, but within those parameters, sort of the world comes out of it, so to speak. Yes, And thank it makes you. sense, too, because so much of your work is, uh, feels, to me, very semiotic in nature. And so to have those kinds mm -hmm. of parameters allows you to go deeper in to those very sort of focused subjects, whether it deal with shape, whether it deal with color. And another question too, because a lot of your series to me appear to be diptychs. Mm -hmm. So does that in any way reference reading when we talk about semiotics, when we talk about the recto and verso pages of a book? Not so much recto verso, though it's not disallowed. And to that point, uh, I must uh, mention and give um, my respect to Mi Wan Kwan, mm. who gave me very sound advice at one point. She said, your ideas are good, but the materials and techniques from easel painting are getting in the way of your intentions. So... The historicity of that, right? Exactly. Yeah. And the semiotics of that. And of course. melancholy, I acknowledge the logic of her argument, mm -hmm. and I changed the materials from oil to acrylic, <laughs> and chose um, a support not so familiar so that I could play the language game I needed to play. Yeah. But to the point of the diptych, mm. that's a very condensed format for introducing the possibility of simultaneity Mm -hmm. and 
or succession, similarity and difference. Discourse too, two panels corresponding to one another, two formal vocabularies, perhaps from the same pool, but speaking entirely different parts of the conversation, so to speak. Yes, yes, thank you, yes. Yeah, yeah. Something that is so striking about all of your work to me is its exquisite and extraordinarily sophisticated sense of design. Still, even in 2024, there's a lot of prejudice when, when you say the word design, you know? It's mm -hmm. like when someone says something is illustrative. I don't see those things as bad things. I see those things as just merely part of a vast toolkit that an artist can utilize for whatever purpose. So I'm curious what role design might play in your head or in your work as you're making it. That is a very important question. Indeed, uh, design is a very complex concept. At the Bauhaus, which was a laboratory for design, experiment was a virtue, but design was a goal wherein to achieve the intersection of art and engineering. Design as an honorable pursuit wherein function and structure are thought together is part of the um, mission or the horizon, maybe better, of modern art. But yes, it has a long history, which, which is not exactly what I've just established. It means, in, through the word disegno, drawing in order to probe the structural necessity of things. Mm. But we project onto graphic design not only a declaration, not only a manifesto, but as an endpoint. It's not an endpoint. It's a, it's a plateau in some discourses or a point of discussion. It's an aid in contouring this existence with all of its ugly, rough edges. And it is a way in seeing the enormity of everything before you, a way of attempting to have, make a little viewfinder for yourself and see one thing that way, without the exclusion of all else, with the mm -hmm. understanding that it is part of a larger, more holistic network of things and ideas, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. In the introductory text to your portfolio, Michelle Grabner quotes you from a public conversation you had with the musician David Grubbs on the occasion of your show Of the Sign, art by Marjorie Wellish, uh, paintings, artist books, provocations at the Flowchart Foundation in Hudson, New York. She quotes you as saying, it's easy to develop a skill set which is deadly for art or thinking. Um, I certainly understand what this form of expertise means in terms of uh, lethality to <laughs> art or thinking, but I'd love to get your thoughts on that idea in a more expanded form. In this age of branding, skill set is highly desirable and in fact an end in itself. But in your question is another question, which I'm going to answer, which is, Practice makes perfect is not mere proficiency, but even expertise is no guarantee of good, not to mention excellent studio practice. And so the artist has to be ever vigilant and ever resourceful. That's a basic answer, but that's my thinking on that. In regards to your palette, I also see your work too as sort of an interrogation of modernist abstraction mm -hmm. to a certain degree. And I wonder if, if I'm correct in that assumption, I wonder, is this interrogation a critique? Uh, is it a kind of homage? Or is it a little bit of both? Poussin is a good reference point for this. Think of his landscapes. They're fairly panoramic. And from the modern point of view, perhaps innocent enough, but he has embedded and indeed encoded what we might call these days as a self-reflexive discourse. 
what is the state of painting today? Or what is the state of culture? Let me give an example that is on my mind for a current project related to our conversation. In one late painting, <coughs> Poussin has slipped in the middle ground three figures, innocuous, so it they seem. One is pointing in the direction of beautiful architecture mm. in the distance. The other two are pointing in the opposite direction, and they are rustics, and they are pointing to very modest buildings. Mm. Poussin is in effect saying, which way for culture, Athens or Sparta? Oh. And he chooses Sparta for himself in a very severe late style, but also he is addressing his contemporaries to say, pleasure isn't the only thing. So there's an instance of conceptual thought being brought into the space of painting. So that's a, a way of understanding how abstract modernism can be addressed with some thoughtfulness, with some self-reflection, with some questions, some working hypotheses. And so what you're discussing here is a kind of, you know, it's an intellectual rigor, right? But it's not without a certain kind of sensualist pleasure as well. So I guess from that, I want to ask you, um, can pleasure be rigorous? I may not be the one to ask, <laughs> but I'm going to say yes because it's the safest answer. When one walks in nature and sees the watercolor effects that so interested Whistler and, and others, is that a cheat? No, that's part of um, the possibility. The question is, how can one utilize that? Certainly Japanese aesthetics has mastered the art of delicacy within strength. There should be a way for beauty to be rigorous. But how and under what rubric is another matter.